In this video, we are talking about electrolytes. So to understand what's going on here, let's talk about what happens when we take a beaker of water and we take a power supply, a battery or something, and we hook um, wires up to this power supply and put them in the water. And what we'll see, if this is pure water, the, the current does not flow. There's no way for electric charge to move from one wire to the other. And we have a dial here that shows us when a current is flowing. So here, this dial would not move. That's pure water. But if we take something that will dissolve, an ionic compound that will dissolve in water, like sodium chloride, then what we'll see is that, well, first of all, what happens when the sodium chloride dissolves in water, like we saw earlier, is that the water molecules will pull the sodium ions away from the chloride ions. And when that happens, each of these ions is surrounded by water molecules, the negative wire, the wire that's hooked up to the negative pole of this battery, this power supply, will attract the cations, the positive charges, towards itself. The positive wire will attract the anions, the, the negative ions, the chloride ions in this case, towards itself. And when that happens, that allows an electric charge to be carried from one wire to the other. We have what's called a complete circuit. Electricity will flow, and we'll see this needle move. Now, a so a strong electrolyte, excuse me, an electrolyte is any substance like that when you dissolve it in water, it will allow an electrical current to flow, just like I explained. Now, a strong electrolyte is a substance that will completely dissolve in water and create a solution that conducts electricity. Sodium chloride is an example. When you put crystals of sodium chloride into water, they completely dissociate. There's no solid sodium chloride left until you reach a, the limit. We'll talk about that later of solubility. But just put a little bit of sodium chloride and we'll get them all to dissolve. All They'll dissociate into sodium ions and chloride ions. And we'll see this needle move. It's a strong electrolyte. Now if we were to take methanol and put it into water, well it will dissolve. Remember like, remember like dissolves like. Methanol is a polar molecule. Water is a polar, mo polar molecule and they both exhibit hydrogen bonding. And the water molecules will surround the methanol molecule. So this happens, the liquid methanol dis dissolves in water to make aqueous methanol. But because methanol is not an ionic compound, it will not dissociate into ions. There are no ions, there's no way for a current to be carried, an electric current to be carried from one wire to the other. No current flows, nothing happens. It's a non-electrolyte, we say. So even though it does dissolve in water, it's still a non-electrolyte because it will not conduct electricity. The resulting solution will not. Now you can tell by looking at a formula if a substance will be an electrolyte or a non-electrolyte. If it's an ionic compound, that means if there's, for us at this point, if there's at least one metal and at least one non-metal element in that compound, then that will be an ionic compound and it will be an electrolyte. Now it might be a strong electrolyte or a weak electrolyte, we'll get into that later, but it will be an electrolyte. On the other hand, if it is a molecular compound, that is if there are only non-metals in the formula, then it will be a non-electrolyte. It ends up hydrogen, sometimes acts as a metal, sometimes as a non-metal, it's kind of different. But in this case here, it ends up it's acting as a non-metal. So this is a non-electrolyte, it's a molecular compound. Now, a weak electrolyte will dissociate in water, but only partially. That's as opposed to a strong electrolyte, which completely dissociates in water. So a weak electrolyte will partially dissociate in water, and that allows a smaller amount of electricity to flow through the solution compared to a strong electrolyte. So hydrofluoric acid is an example. So if we were to take some hydrofluoric acid and put it into water, some of the hydrofluoric acid would dissociate into hydrogen ions with a plus charge, and fluoride ions with a negative charge, but a lot of the molecules would still stay stuck together, bonded together. That's a weak electrolyte. And so we would not see as much of a current flowing here if this concentration of hydrofluoric acid was the same as, say, the concentration of sodium chloride, which is a strong electrolyte. Now, how do you know if something's a strong or a weak electrolyte? We'll get to that later. You don't know yet. That's okay. That's just what it is. Now, related to this, these electrolytes, um, are, are this, is this unit called an equivalent. An equivalent is the amount of an ion that's equal to one mole 
of positive or negative electric charge. So one mole of potassium ions is equal to one equivalent. A lot of times we use milli equivalents, and so one equivalent is just a thousand milli equivalents. All these are exact relationships. By the way, these are conversion factors. We're going to do some dimensional analysis here. So one mole of bromide is also one equivalent because it's one mole of negative charge. doesn't matter positive or negative. It's still an equivalent or a thousand milli equivalents. Now look here, magnesium with its plus two charge is e one mole of magnesium is equal to two equivalents or 2,000 milli equivalents because there are two positive charges. And one mole of carbonate with two negative charges is equal to two equivalents or 2,000 milli equivalents. So every solution that, that, that exists that we'll ever see, the total positive charge must be equal to the total negative charge. So what, for example, let's say a solution has 43 milli equivalents per liter of potassium ion and 14 milli equivalents per liter of sodium ion. That means we have 43 plus 14 is 57 milli equivalents per liter of positive charge. We know there has to be 57 milli equivalents per liter of negative charge. And so let's say we have, we know there's only two anions present, bromide and chloride. And if there's, we know there's 29 milli equivalents per liter of bromide, because we need 57 milli equivalents per liter total of negative charge, there has to be 57 minus 29, which is equal to 28 milli equivalents per liter of chloride ion. The charge has to balance. Now, <clears throat> here's an example of what we can do with this. Let's say a blood test comes back for a patient's blood and ends up there's 2.3 milli equivalents per liter of magnesium ion. And we want to know how many moles of magnesium there are, there were in 278 milliliters of this blood, this patient's blood. Well, this is a dimensional analysis problem, and so we'll approach it as any other dimensional analysis program, and that is we're gonna fit first look for the units over answer. What do we wanna find? Well, we wanna find how many moles of magnesium. So that's what we wanna find. That's the units over answer. What's our starting point? Well, 278 milliliters. Now what I've done is because in chemistry we go back and forth between milliliters and liters so often, and we just do this all the time. I just move, if I want to go from milliliters to liters, I just move the decimal three to the left, and I did that here. So I got us 0.278 liters right away, just to make it easier. And then, okay, our conversion factors. Well, what do we know? We know that there's 2.3 milli equivalents of magnesium per liter, so we can say one liter of this patient's blood is equal to, has 2.3 milli equivalents. We also know that one equivalent is a thousand milli equivalents. And because magnesium has a positive two charge, we know that one mole of magnesium is equal to two equivalents. So we plug these guys in, making sure that our units cancel. So let's see, liters here cancels with liters here. Milli equivalents and milli equivalents cancel and equivalents and equivalents cancel, we end up with moles of magnesium. And so it ends up there's 0 0.00032 moles of magnesium in 278 milliliters of this patient's blood.